Okay, hello and welcome to In Conversation with me. Uh, my name is Julia Tibua and it's a delight to come your way once again. Um, this week, our weekly um, virtual chat session with leading names in sports. And um, we've brought you a total of list, that is A-list interviews. And today we have for you a young talent doing amazing in the world of football. He is Patson Daka, who plays for Red Bull Salzburg and the Zambian national men's um, football team, that is the Chipolopolo of Zambia. So I'm sure that we'll be getting a lot of um, questions from our Zambian friends. So he, he is a top guy. He has uh, so far scored 21 goals out of 23 games in this um, season, that is in all competitions, in a fashion that is getting him a lot of mentions and a lot of um, attention. So he's joining us shortly for this session. You can also send us your comments and questions during this one hour. So hopefully, um, Patson is joining us. Okay, Patson, hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? Well, not, not bad. You've been getting a lot of mentions. Um, everyone is mentioning your name. What's been happening? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I think it's just uh, the grace of God it, that is working. It's really a special moment for me, and uh, I'm just happy that things are really going the way they are going right now. And uh, yeah, it's 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 just a, a privilege for me. And I'm, I remember speaking to you a um, few years ago. <laughs> yeah, and I think after, that was in 2017 or so. Yeah, on African <laughs> news, and you were with the, um, the Zambian youth team. You're doing so well, and everybody, even back home in Zambia, they were talking about you. But people didn't know um, the, the, the kind of the kind of striker <laughs> that you are. But um, thank God that, just like you're saying, you are, people are beginning to recognize how good you are. But let's talk about the Austrian league, um, which returned um, this mm -hmm. month, and uh, how was it for you? returning to the field to do what you like to do best with everything that has been happening in the world? Well, uh, it wasn't an easy moment. Like, uh, it was a moment whereby you really have to utilize, like for me personally, I felt like it wasn't a moment to relax, but a moment to refocus, to re-energize and to try to understand myself more on which uh, points that I have to work on, what I have to improve. And uh, I think the the work that I've been putting in during that time, I think it has started paying off. And uh, I feel like I really made good use of the moment. And uh, because I felt that was the opportunity for me to become better and not to lag behind because I started well in the... Uh, this season, so I didn't really want it to uh, to go down with my form, so I wanted to keep going higher, and it was kind of a challenge, but I knew that it was all up to me, like what I'm going to do during that period of time, it was what is going to determine how I'm going to to, to return to the field again. And how much work, you've spoken about how you had to do a bit of interception and get to know yourself more and also train harder to fill that gap or anything that you are lacking in your football. How much more work did you do on yourself? Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm one person who, like in recent uh, times, I, I wasn't that much of a gym guy trying to like strengthen my muscles and all that. But I think during that period, I did a lot of strength training and we are given programs from the uh, training staff for individual programs. And so I was trying to combine it with my own personal things because like, like I said, I have to understand my body, what I have to work on and to, to improve. And I'm talking about Jim. I think I have a, a message from, one of your colleagues, you, Ramal. <laughs> Ramal is saying, I don't know if you know Ramal, but he's saying he's a big fan for, of you. 
Okay, and he spoke about gym as well. He was talking about you have to come to gym. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I know, I know him. Is <laughs> okay. So he's it, saying he's saying you are lazy. Yeah. Are lazy. <laughs> he's saying. Let me read exactly what he said. He said, um, "Okay, why why so lazy? I'm waiting for you." In the gym, come on. So we're talking about gym, Pastor, he's not been going to gym. <laughs> yeah, like I said before, I'm I'm not one person who was like a, a gym guy. Like I I didn't really, I wasn't going much in the gym, and even now, like okay, I don't really go much in the gym. But like I said before, it's about understanding your body and okay. just to know what your body wants, and so. I I try to go, but here and there, not every time. Like him, he is always in the gym. And but the sad part is that when he goes to the gym, whatever he works on in the gym, it comes to me. So I don't have to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but um, there, there's a question asking how how is the Austrian league? How how would you rate it? Uh, well, I think it's uh, it's competitive on its level. And uh, I think it's a very good uh, league for more especially upcoming talent. Like for me personally, I feel like it's a very well organized league with uh, the opportunity for young players to develop. And uh, like mostly like at our club, I think it's a very good platform for young talents to be recognized and you know, a lot of people talk about our league not being competitive because of the the margin the margins that we get to maybe to win the games. But again, at the end of the day, it's not really about the league not being competitive, but uh, the philosophy of the team, the objective that we have as a team. And because if you pay much attention to our football, it's more of attacking football. It, it, you can see that we we didn't like only do in the league, but we were also able to score many goals in the Champions League against big teams. So it, it shows that it's not just that our league is not competitive, but it is the kind of uh, team that we are into and uh, the direction that we have, the the philosophy of the team that is really happening. So I think it's it's competitive on its own and yeah, it's a very good platform for for young talents to develop. And we are seeing we are seeing that talent in um, Ellen Holland, and who again scored um, this this afternoon. I'm sure watching him play is a motivation for you as well because you you played with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, because you know a lot of people were talking about him like, uh, no, he can only score in Austria because the league is not competitive. But look what he has done. He has been scoring in the Champions League. He's scoring in Germany. And it's, like I said, it's a league for development, you know, like for young talents to develop. And he has proven everyone wrong that he can do it. Like he's scoring almost in every game, which is very good, which is a very great uh, thing to see. It's a very good motivation and a very big step for us to follow. Yeah. A very big step for you to follow. But what, what's so special about him? We've seen the goals. We've seen that he, he he talks little, but he does he, he does it on a pitch. You know, you having maybe um, chat with him or relating with him. How how special is he? Yeah. Well, he's uh, a very simple guy, and uh, he's very open. He's he's very professional. Like the way he conducts himself, you can sometimes question his age. You know, he's really professional and. He really knows what he wants, you know. So I feel like that's his personality. He talks less and he works more. So he let, he lets the the work do the talking, which is very important. And I I pray that he continue being like that, you know, because I feel like at the end of the day, when you get to talk a lot, people always try to quote you wrong in everything that you say, you know. So it's a matter of being careful again of what you say and where you you say it and so i feel he's just a simple guy that's who he is he's not like maybe faking anything that's his personality on the pitch of the pitch that's that's just how he is and i'm sure that for you you're also hoping that maybe you're in a big club but you're hoping that maybe in the coming um yes 
you're, you're seeing yourself even more on the bigger stage to prove yourself. You're doing that anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. Like uh, for me personally, like I do really have uh, long-term goals, but I have short-term goals which help me to reach to my long-term goal. So like for now, I can have a, a dream of wanting to play for a bigger club, but my focus right now is on Red Bull. What I'm going to do today with Red Bull, it's what is going to sell me out in the, and it will determine how long I'm going to stay at this club. Let, let's talk about your short-term goals. What are your short-term goals with um, Red Bull Salzburg? Winning every game and scoring <laughs> every game. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and your, and your long-term goals? My long-term goal is, of course, to win the league, to win the, uh, the cup games, and yeah, to lift trophies, to qualify to the Champions League, and you know all those things. And um, you, you're talking about how competitive the league is. Lask, who lost um six points from flouting the COVID-19 restrictions, will come fighting for the top spot. You are playing tomorrow. Um, you have a game tomorrow. Are you certain you can maintain that um, slot? <laughs> well, it's, like I said, it's a matter of uh, focusing on every game that comes. Every game has got its own different challenges. And uh, so every challenge that comes, we have to face it. We take every game as it comes, step by step. So at the end of the day, the game starts uh, like, on the eco phase where we are all zero zero and who wants it more is going to get the 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 three points. So we just take the game as it comes. And um your your season so far you've you've had some incredible numbers. And when we put it there I'm sure you know already. So we're not talking about the goals, the <laughs> um the games that you've played, but these are incredible numbers for someone at your at your age. Yeah, like, again, it's it's about statistics at the end of the day, you know. So, like, for me as a striker, I have to help the team win, scoring, assisting, and all that. It, it's what is going to, to help me. It's going to help the team, and it's going to help also my value. So, at the end of the day, it's also knowing how I'm going to improve my statistics because everyone is not – for me as a striker – it's not like they're going to say how, how he played well, but he didn't score, you know. He didn't assist, so all those things. I, well, I try by all means to work on my statistics. And um, working on your statistics and getting the numbers in, people have recognized it. The world, are rec they are recognizing it. And you've been hailed as one of the brightest talents in Europe. And does that put pressure, some sort of pressure on you? <laughs> I I always uh I love this this question because like <laughs> everyone talks about pressure and Is for it me I've, I've, even even I've, in our job, <laughs> we have pressure. Yeah, but pressure is always there. Anyway, there's always pressure, but how you're going to handle it? Because for me, like the way I take pressure, I take it as a, as a motivation. I Growing up, I've always had pressure. Every club that I've played for, I had pressure. So I don't let it define me. I always try to make it as a motivation. How best would, is it going to work for me? So, yeah, pressure is always there, but I take it as, as a motivation. But as I take it as a motivation, how do you deal with it? How do you go around it after the motivation? How do you go around it? to minimize because we are all human even in, in in our in our line of work we feel the pressure sometimes and you have to find a balance between what you do or what you're going to do and the decisions you're going to make so apart from it being motivation how do you handle the pressure that comes with everybody's attention on you and they are hoping that you be consistent in scoring the goals yeah for me uh it's a matter of what I can do, what I do best. And I can only become better like my next game, you know. So I don't really focus on what people say and 
because I know myself, I know what I'm capable of doing. And so I try by all means, first of all, not to disappoint myself because like I said, I have my personal goals. I have the team goals. So if I cannot disappoint myself, it means that I won't disappoint the people out there. So how I handle the pressure is by staying calm and knowing that everything is under my control. It's only me who can change the situation, you know, so what I'm going to do, it is what is going to give me the result that I want. I don't have to blame anyone. So I have to stay calm, know what will work for me and not focus much on the negative part. Because when you feed your mind with negativity, you cannot expect positive results. So I try by all means to do something positive, focus on something positive that is going to give me positive results. Indeed. And um, th there's a question here someone sent in. When I put the artwork that we are coming to talk to you and we're talking about Holland but the person is asking after Holland left um, mm -hmm. you were touted as one to fit into his shoes do you think you have properly uh, fit into that role <laughs> well you know it's it's not a matter of uh, fitting in the shoes I've always been there and it's a matter of time, things happen different for us. You know, other yeah. people, it happens quick. Some, it takes time. So you don't have to, like for me, you don't have stress. I knew that my time will come and now the time is right. It, is, it has come for me. How am I going to handle it? How am I going to, am I going to hold it with both my hands? You know, now it's all in, in me. So I have to utilize it. And that's what I've just done. It's my time. I don't have to fit in anyone's shoes, but to continue walking in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But now talk to us about the Salzburg team. What works for the team? The team seems to have a tall list of talents who excel everywhere they go. And you're talking about the Austrian league being a league where you can develop your talents. And it looks like Salzburg has countless number of players who everywhere they go, they excel. What, what is it about the team? Well, first of all, I think uh, they really have good, uh, good management. Uh, the scouting team, they really do a recommendable job and they have got a very good eye for talent. And also what helps the team is the philosophy of the team, like I said earlier, because uh, it's not just like I feel the the philosophy of the team and uh, the players that come in, you really have to understand the philosophy. And if you can play here, you can play in any team because we've got high pressing football. We run a, a lot. And so it helps us to even like utilize this opportunity for our opponents, you know, because we get to have intensity of our game, which is not really common for other teams. So, I think that really helps us to even like other players to fit in when they go out there because it like the way it is, it's just like we are also in the top five leagues, you know, it's because of the philosophy, the mm -hmm. idea that is there in the team. Okay. And um, you, you have some Ghanaian players in there as well. I'm sure, I'm sure you relate all right with them. <laughs> <laughs> very much, very much. Uh, and talking about Ghanaians, yeah, we are, it's like uh, the time I came here, the first time I came here in 2017, uh, I met Gideon Mensah. He was like my guide. He was the one helping me with uh, how to go about things here. And from that time, we've been family and also Majid Ashmeru, another right. great guy. He's a very great guy also always together trying to just create the bond and you know we are family we are we are, we are representing africa the continent so <laughs> <laughs> we try by all means to to stay together not only from zambia from ghana but also from mali nigeria everywhere and um, th there's a question here saying how how long do you intend or how long do you want to stay at salzburg as a player <laughs> Well, uh, 
I'm not really sure, but like I said, I have a running contract here, which is until 2024, which is my focus. And like I said earlier, it's about me focusing on what I'm doing, what I would do today. It is what's going to market me. And I don't think about, oh, maybe next month I want to go. Oh, that's the, the job for my agent. That's why I've got agent. For me, my job is to play football. My agent is the one who's going to deal with that thing. <laughs> but how, how have you managed the, or how have you managed to resist the temptation to leave the club? You know, your agent is there, but I'm sure every, every now and then they come to you. They're like, oh, okay, this club is looking for you. That club is looking for you. Everyone wants your signature. So how have you managed to resist that temptation? <laughs> well, uh, it's very easy because when someone contacted me, I just direct them to my agent. I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple as that. Yeah, and um, there's a there's a question. There's some questions here. Okay, so okay, there are lots of Zambians in here. Yeah, we see you. all the Chipolo Polos. Okay, so someone is asking. Kobe Ken is asking. Um, please, how do you feel about the racism going on, and what's um what's your address to it? What do you what do you say? Like racism, and also like racism in football. Probably because you can you can speak to racism in football in general as well. Although the football community they've come together to also address this. Someone Kobe is asking, what what's your take on that? Now well, it's it's a very critical issue and which is very bad. And for me personally, here from the time I came here, I've never experienced it before here. But it doesn't. Uh, give me the reason not to talk about it because uh, in one of uh, the games that we've played, I also did the, the, the celebration concerning the same thing because I feel we're in this together and we have to stay together. When we stay together, we'll be stronger and we can, and our voices can be heard. And I feel with the opportunity that I have in this platform that I have, it's easy for people to, to listen. So, but one thing that I know is that no one is born a racist. It's something that is being taught by their parents. So it's a duty for parents, how they're going to raise their kids, what they're feeding their kids. Because what you tell the kids, they grow up with it, you know. So you cannot say that this person was born a racist. No, it's just something that they get to learn something that they learn from somewhere or from their parents or somewhere else, you know? So it's a very sad issue. And I feel it's something that really has to come to an end. It has been going on for so long. And I think every day it's becoming worse, you know? And I feel that is why now almost everyone is talking about it. Well, such powerful words. And when you said no, no one is born a racist, I think um, rightly, um, very apt from you. But um, the, there are lots of questions. Being, okay, Frank Ayodi is asking, being an African player playing in the top five leagues in the world, do you believe African players can play even um, a bigger part than we have been playing or that we are playing at the moment? Do, do you believe that? Yeah, I do believe that and everything is possible. It's, I feel mostly in Africa, we don't really pay attention to the grassroots, you know, like the, the setups in, in Africa don't, are not really, we cannot compare them with the uh, European setup, you know, they really concentrate much on young talents and they know when, they concentrate on good academies. They will have good products. So for us, we really get to see who is going to give us instant results. You know, we don't really have got long-term projects where we want to develop young players. Maybe, oh, in the next 10 years, this team is going to take us somewhere. You know, we just want to, that's why in Africa, most we always want to stick to, oh, legends. Oh, this player has been playing every time. He's good, you know? It's got experience, but how are going? How are the young players going to gain experience if they are not playing? They cannot. So it's now when they come in, it's difficult also to fit in because you come, you just found people who are like they have been playing for so long. Now 
you don't even know where to start from what to talk about how you're going to uh interact with them you know so i think right now it has started changing a bit a lot of young players have started uh occupying a lot of uh national teams and i think we are heading somewhere and african football will really change it's it's just a matter of time i think right now we are heading in the right direction and um patson everybody wants you to sing i don't know if you've been singing for them to hear <laughs> I don't know. To sing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Oh, if you sing. If you sing it, I'm not a musician. <laughs> saying, I'm a footballer. Yeah, we 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 the hat sound is saying sing my son Patton anyway. Patton is a footballer. He, he he knows how to score goals, not not how to how to sing, but there there's some question. Okay, Chris um Singogo is asking, do you reckon going to Manchester United? Mm. <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> I've got no comment about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay, know what so, the future holds. Right. And um okay, um there's some questions here that I want to pull. Someone is asking about how it is difficult for African players, I think the young talent to succeed in Europe. What what is the what is the strategy? I believe I I saw that question somewhere. Okay, yeah. I'll I'll go back on that. But someone was asking how how important is it for African players like young talents when you go to Europe? How do you adjust? How difficult is it for you to adjust? And if you finally do it, how important is it for you to take that opportunity? Well, uh it's not something easy much really when you come to a foreign land. You are young. You much really if you don't have someone that you are close to whom you know very well. but football is is the same you just have to play to your strength and understand that you have to be twice better than the people that you've found there you know you always have to work twice as hard as they they are working because for you coming from uh, africa to come to a foreign land like for me it was a bit of a challenge uh because i was lacking more of uh, little uh tactical things you know because really i wasn't in an academy where they they would concentrate much on basics or that so i was lacking a little bit of basics so at the end of the day it's about knowing your strength playing to your strength and just be open to learn Um okay boss Zambia is asking just know you inspire and um and I'm proud of you as a Zambia okay he is he these are just comments and um, someone is asking what's your hidden talent if you're not scoring goals what what's your hidden talent person <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not scoring goals uh oh I I just get to read a lot I try to keep my mind active and learn new things. And um, who, who do you look up to in football? I've got a lot of people I look up to, different people. The likes of Luis Suarez, uh Jamie Vardy, Pichalito, Kylian Mbappe, Samuel Eto'o. I get to watch their videos to see <laughs> did you drop by you know so I get to like for me uh, really I just get to try to see what works best for me what that player has that I want to develop what is going to you know help my football my style so I try to get from different people So you you mentioned about five or six players. So what 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 have you been picking from them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh like for example I'll say maybe for Luis Suarez what I look from him is his movements in the box the the kind of feeling that he has for the ball to know where to go at what time, you know. And for Jamie Vardy I look at his movements behind the defense you know always trying to play behind the defense 
for Mbappe, it's his explosiveness because I know I'm fast also. So how is am I going to utilize that? You know, so I'm trying to learn from him how he does it, and but not trying to play like him, but how it's going to work for me. So, and uh, for Chicharito also, I try to look at him how he always has this feeling of going for rebounds. His instinct. When someone shoots, yeah, the instinct that he has always to make a four up when someone shoots because you don't have to trust a goalkeeper as a striker. Anything can happen. He's human. You can... <laughs> yeah. And um, okay, there was a question here. I think he's... What foot... Okay, what football... Charles is asking, what football team did you support growing up? Liverpool and Barcelona. And I still Ooh. support them. What, what kind of combination is that, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of combination? <laughs> I don't know. It was just that moment where you're growing up and then uh, you're getting to choose. Oh, in England, which team do you support? You know, in Spain, which team do you support? So that's how I came up with two teams. <laughs> Why, 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 why Liverpool? Why Liverpool and why Barcelona? Uh, like I said, it was just a childhood kind of moment where you choose, and I just love to to watch them how they used to play. You know, the players who were who were there, like Fernando Torres. You know, and just I don't know, just that. <laughs> and um. Yeah. Let's now talk about Zambian football. What what would you say is your most um, memorable moment with with the team? Or if maybe you've not you can't find one now and hopefully soon because you've got more time to play. Um by God's grace you've got more time to play for them. So what's your most memorable moment so far for the Zambian national team? Uh, for the national team. <laughs> It hasn't yet come. <laughs> it hasn't so, yet come. <laughs> what would you, what would you want to see, um, or what what are you thinking about? Hopefully, that would be your best moment for um, the Zambian national team. Or you wearing the Zambian colours? Qualifying to the World Cup. It has been a long term dream for us, and it still is. It's our dream, so that would be the best moment for me as the national team. How how soon do you think that that can come through? Well, I cannot detect how soon, but what I believe that is anything is possible at any time. It might be tomorrow, it might be that day. What matters is, is the work that you put in, the belief that you have, and yeah, just doing what is right that is going to help us to achieve the dream. And you, and you think collectively as a team. They are all in sync with this. Like they, you have the team capable of doing that. Oh yeah, I think uh, we have the team. It's just a matter of uh, like now we have a new coach, so we have to bond together. We have to understand each other. They, maybe it's, it's a new philosophy again. Maybe you know different tactics, but. We have got good players, we've got quality players, and it's a dream that we we all have, the nation has, and so no one can say they don't know about it. Everyone has it at the back of their head. <laughs> and, and if you have a coach like uh, Mitchell, who I spoke to a few weeks ago, I'm sure, have you had any interaction with him since he took over the job? More than ever, from the time before, I don't know, when he... I don't know, but we have had a lot of conversations together. Almost uh, in a week we speak, I don't know how many times, because he always try to remind me you not know, to relax and what I have to improve on. Because like talking to him, it's, it's training on its own. <laughs> it tells me a lot of things that I got to, I get to, <laughs> I get to learn that I, I didn't know about myself and Things that I think I'm doing, be, I'm doing good, but he really tries to make me uh, realize that I have a lot to do, you know. And I really appreciate he's been so helpful for me. He always wants the best for us. He wants the best for the nation. And just speaking to him, it's really great. And I believe 
the time when we'll get to work together it will, it will even be much more greater than just speaking on the phone he's he's always seven us marking a register on you yeah because he has <laughs> <laughs> There's a question here. Um, Frank is asking, what lesson did you draw from Christopher Katongo, captaincy of Zambia, to the Nations Cup, I believe? So what lesson did you draw from um, Christopher Katongo? That is a legend right there. Oh, I've got so much respect for Christopher Katongo. He's a very big legend. And he brought us our first ever African trophy, uh, and not only at the Africa Cup, because I even had a privilege to play with him. It was uh, a very special moment for me. I have got so many things that I've learned from him, but one thing that always keeps me pushing, much like when I'm at the national team, it's how he always played with his heart for the nation, you know. He always gave his best in every game, and that what always drives me uh, and it's uh, he, he always wanted the best for the team he was working for the team he was a team player so to say yeah he's, he was a team player he always tried to to be involved in everything there's a question here i think you've answered this question what what do you need to succeed in europe as an as a young african player i think i think I think you've, yeah. you've, answered, you've answered that question, so we'll move on from that. But who is your greatest Zambian player, in your opinion, ever? Who is it? Who's your greatest? My greatest? Oh, <laughs> oh <man. laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a very, it's a very difficult question. It's tricky. Because there are some, yeah, like there are a lot of players that I haven't had a, uh, like, I haven't watched. Yeah. Yeah, See. I've just heard about them. And so it's it's really difficult for me. I, I don't know. But wait, which people that, let, let, let's make it easy like this. Maybe you, you've seen, or the, the ones that you have seen, Mm -hmm. Or the ones that you've had the opportunity to maybe watch their videos or hear stories about them. Not someone you feel um, you don't know about. The one that you are privy to or you know about. Which, which one would you be? It can be two or three. You never know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think every player that I've watched is the best because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like it's, for me, I think, you know, every, every player g gives his own contribution in his own position. And like I said, for some players, it happens quick, for others, it doesn't. And so for that player also to become better or to become the best, he needs someone. It's not a, it's not an individual sport where, he can just become big for himself. But, like, of course, there are a lot of players, like I said, like, uh, even though I didn't watch much about him, Kalusha Walia, uh, Christopher Gatongo, Renford Kalaba, there are a lot of players that have really contributed to the to Zambian football. And some, I may not mention them, but there are a lot. Anyway, th there are some few questions here before we let you go. And um, you know your commitment to Salzburg, but... Oh, no. <laughs> Someone, Morty is asking. We don't want any questions that will put Pastor in trouble, you know. <laughs> Morty is asking, how long will you be at S... Okay, Red Bull Salzburg. He's asking, how, how long are you going to be there, Pastor? I don't know, but... I have a contract until 2024. <laughs> it looks like people want to see where you want to play next, even when you have a, you have a contract. Okay, this yeah. question is coming from... Ajay is asking, since you support Liverpool and they have similar philosophy as Red Bull, um, will you consider to play for them knowing that your former colleague um, or your former colleague, Stadio Mane and um, Keita, 
are doing well? You know, I don't think there's anyone who don't love to play for for Liverpool. And yeah, if the time is right, why not? And I'm looking at um, Sadio Mane and Keita, and of course, yeah. Keita not been performing too much because of injuries and all that, but clearly now he, he, he's fit um, to play. But looking at what Sadio Mane and Keita too, they've done, I'm sure as an African player, you, mu you must be proud of it. More than proud. Like, it's, it's not easy for an African player to, to come to Europe and to play at the top level, to be consistent. And, like, again, there are a lot of African players who have been there already, like the likes of uh, George Ware, uh, Didier Drogba, Samuel Eto'o. They have left a, a high standard, a high level for us that we really have to follow, you know. And so, I think for for us who have the privilege to even be here in Europe and to see the likes of Naby Kate and Sadio Mane who are doing big things, it, it also gives us that uh, feeling to say we can also make it big, you know. They have already made a way for us. It's just for us to follow suit. There, there's a question here saying, um, it's coming from... Nyanya, I hope I pronounce this name very well, but <laughs> there's a Zambia name. I hope I pronounce it well. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Forgive me. Um, he's asking, what would be your advice to Zambian youth who have the passion to go professional in football? Uh, well, it's... It's just uh, a matter of being dedicated to what you want to achieve and you just have to have passion for what you're doing you have to love what you're doing you don't really have to have someone to remind you to do something so i think everyone stand a chance to to make it big in life but what also matters is how much you want it what are you doing to to reach your, your goal because you find someone saying he wants to be a professional footballer but he doesn't want to go for training he doesn't want to do individual training how are you going to reach that goal you don't just have to wait for the coach to tell you do this that's what we're going to do then when he doesn't say anything then you don't do but you have to have a mind of your goals what you want to achieve the circle that you surrounding you is it helping you to achieve your, your goal you know so there are a lot of things that are involved. It's not just about going on the pitch and work, but what you're doing outside the pitch as well, how you conduct yourself, it's what is going to determine whether you're going to make it big or not. Because there are a lot of players who make it big or maybe they have got the talent and people will say, okay, this person is going to make it big in, in football. But you find someone whom they were not really paying much attention has made it big because of the discipline, the dedication, you know, the focus that he, that person had, but because a lot of people who are talented, they think talent alone is enough. I have got talent, so it doesn't matter what I do outside football, you know. So it's not just about the talent, but what you also do outside football. And um, of, of all the goals that you've scored, Patson, I know maybe you can't remember some of them. Wh which one is... <laughs> Which one is the best goal? <laughs> <laughs> it's not yet. I, I, I haven't yet scored my best goal. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. So clearly, then it means more goals are on the way, which, which we, are, we, are really, we are really happy about. But um, one issue that keeps coming up um, in, this, or is in this era, whether or not we should have the Africa Cup of Nations next year, and with everything that's been happening, the qualifiers, we are not done. We've played just two out of the six that we are supposed to play for the Africa Cup of Nations. But you as a player, with everything that's going on, you've just recently gone back to play football. Do you think it will be prudent for us to play the Africa Cup of Nations in January? Or you think maybe the people involved should have a rethink of maybe rescheduling it for you players to maybe get um, mentally, probably mentally okay for a tournament as big as the Africa Cup of Nations? Uh, well, on this issue, I think it's a very sensitive issue. It's something that 
has to deal with uh, healthy. And uh, I think health comes first. So it's, for me, I don't really have a concrete uh, uh, say about it. But all I can say is just that the, the people who are specialized in it, they are the best people to advise whether to continue or when can it continue. And because they have studied, they know what is best, how we can handle the situation. So they are the best people to advise and us, we just have to, uh, to follow the, the rules and the advice they give us. And for us, it's just to go ahead and play. They say we have to play. <laughs> can, can, can Zambia ever win the Africa Cup of Nations again? You, you test, they tested that. You haven't tested that. Your hope is to qualify oh. the team for the World Cup. Can, can you win the Africa Cup of Nations again? <laughs> of course, it's not just about qualifying for the World Cup or for the Africa Cup. We, we want to win the Africa Cup again. I, I have felt how it felt, how it feels like when I won the under-20. Now I'm just imagining the, the senior Africa Cup. So, <laughs> of course, we have to and we will. <laughs> and um, I see the passion when you won the junior one. I've seen the passion that comes out from Zambia and everything. And I've seen so many Zambians watching us. Hello. Um, I've, not, I've not been to Zambia before, hopefully soon. But I've seen that passion and it translates into the football on the pitch. Talk to us about that Zambian national team passion. What, what is so unique about it? The fans, the, the football, every, everything. Talk to us about it. Well, football is uh, one thing that brings so much joy to Zambian people. And uh, I think I should say it's the number one sport in Zambia. Everyone loves football. And like I said, it brings joy to, to every Zambian. So for us, it's a family. And so we as, a, as players, we, we understand that we really have to give our best in every game that we play because the fans, they come to support us. Someone is, is paying to come and see you, to watch you, do what you love to do, you know. So why should, we, why should you reserve yourself? So we just try to give our best. And the passion has to be seen that someone really deserves to, to be in this team because being chosen from 17 million Zambians, you have to show that you really deserve to be there. And I, just two questions for you before we let you go. You know you have a game tomorrow, so you have to prepare for that. Um, someone is asking, um, what question was that? Okay, apart from, Christian is asking, apart from the dedication on the pitch, how dedicated are you to the word of God? So we're talking about football and religion here. <laughs> uh, well, it's, I'm, I'm, I am dedicated to the, to the word of God because it is God who gave me the talent. And uh, so for me, I feel my talent that I have is just also a platform for me to talk to people about the word of God. Or to, that's why I always, when I score, I try by all means, I give back the glory to God. So I, also people who don't know maybe about, oh, I haven't heard about God, they can see. They, maybe they'll ask, what is he doing, you know? And so I'm really dedicated to, to the word of God. And I try by all means to read the word of God and just to, to eat the, the fruit of the spirit. Talking about um, when, you, you, when you score a goal, you celebrate in some way. There, there was a question he asking you, I love your celebration. What is the meaning to it? <laughs> so what are the meaning to the celebrations that you do? Is it connected to God, like you're saying? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Like uh, I said, I, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible, which is uh, Ephesians 6, verse 11, which talks about the, the full arm of God. So uh, I really didn't have a celebration, and I thought maybe how am I going to create one celebration that is just going to be me, not imitating anyone else, you know. So that's how I said, okay, I love this scripture, which talks about putting on a full armor of God. So I'm going to just come up with this celebration to say, okay, 
I'm wearing, I'm putting on the full armor coat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. And uh, Majid Ashmero, okay, hello, we see you. Majid is saying he's going to beat you. I don't know how he's going to ah, do it's, that. It's a big joke. It's a big joke. <laughs> I don't know what, how he's going to do that. There's a final question coming from Sam, uh, my colleague who is in Nigeria. He's asking, since you won the CAF Youth Player of the Year in 2017, how much does that inspire you and your performance for club and also for country? Well, every award that I win... I don't really focus on them. Uh, they ca they just come in as a reward for the for the hard work that I've put in. My main focus always is just to do the best for my team. And after I received that award, it was a big motivation to say there are greater things to come. If I can achieve this one, there's still a lot of awards to come. So for me, winning that award also. It, always reminds me that people won't expect less from me. They want to see uh, this player who won the 2017 Young Player of the Year. Where is he now? What is he doing? You know? Because there are some times where I see it, I see people trying to compare, like, uh, oh, maybe during the Under-20 World Cup, players like uh, maybe Patson Daga, they played against maybe... Players, they were in the same intake with Jordan Sancho. Look at what they are doing. Where are they, you know? So uh, now imagine <laughs> where, where where do you want to be when your, your friends are, are, are still up there, they're still active, you know? So I always have that drive that keeps on pushing me. Like I want to be better every day and just create my own legacy. But how has that inspire you to perform for your club and also country? Uh, uh, like I said, it, it has inspired me to say people won't expect less from me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So every day I have to really prove myself that I, I just, it just didn't happen by mistake. Interesting, but uh, what's in that your number 20 jersey? You're always wearing number 20. What, what's in the number 20 <laughs> jersey? Uh, nothing really special, but uh, I, will, uh, I should just say that it's it was a breakthrough number for me when I was in back in Zambia with Power Dynamos. I changed, I was wearing number nine, and then I changed to number 20, and then it was a breakthrough for me, so I changed and I stick to number 20. Okay, so if you go to maybe Liverpool, Barcelona, those are your two clubs. If you go there, you still maintain <laughs> you still maintain your number twenty jersey. Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. We are grateful that you joined us. I know you have a really tight schedule, but you took time off to talk to us and um, in conversation with this afternoon. It's been good seeing you rise all this year, and I remember like we spoke about when I spoke with you in 2017, fresh from winning the CAF Youth Player and everything. And it's been such a, a journey. And I'm glad that you are still doing well. We are hoping that you do more. So let's do this again some, some, some other time. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully, maybe final words to the people of Zambia watching us. Well, uh, I just want to say thank you for, for everyone that tuned in to come and... Uh, have a chat with us and really appreciate their support. Always, I'll do my best to put a smile on their faces and they should just know that I'm not doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for them. I'm here because of their support and their love. So I'll keep doing my best every day. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Patson. Have a, have a great day. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.